Hi everyone, Mike Eaton Jr. here along with my father, Mike Eaton Sr. Today we're going to be talking about some drills that you can do both on lane and at home. Recently I've been working on my release. I've been running into some trouble. I call it the meat hook. And it's basically where when you get to the point of release, your hand floats around the side of the ball, but your whole hand is still in the ball. Your thumb and everything. And then to get it off, you got to really hit up hard on the ball to get it off your hand. And it just creates all kinds of problems with ball speed, rev rate, and uh, core down lane reaction, a lot of over -under. So I've been posting some videos, day ones, day two, day three videos with uh, drill rep counts. And a lot of people are asking, hey, what are those drills you're doing? How do you do them? What are they for? And so we thought we would answer those questions by making a video today. I hope you like it. So this drill is to help separate the release from the arm swing. Uh, basically what we're trying to do is to just unload on the ball without hitting up on it, without any recoil. So you just get in the finishing position, hold the ball here, and forward like that. Make sure you do not come all the way up because that'll get you to start hitting up on the ball. You want all your motion to go that way down the lane. So this drill here, we just call it the yo-yo drill. I used to do it back when I was younger. I used to do it with a can of VA juice or tomato juice. It would last a little while. But it's strictly to learn how to roll the ball on a lane and get some rev rate without tearing up your hand. When I was growing up learning how to bowl, I was in my early 20s. I used to get blisters on my thumb real bad and bleed, have band-aids on. I said, how can I stop that? So I came up with a couple of drills that helped let me clear my hand and roll the ball down the lane without grabbing hold of it. And hey, it looked pretty good, so I stuck with it. And over the years, it's worked well for a lot of kids I've worked with. So my son Mike, when I saw him bowling in a tournament a while ago, he was really hitting it up on the ball, having trouble clearing his thumb. Meat hook. Yeah, meat hook. Same thing I used to do when I was younger. So I said, okay, we're gonna start learning the yo-yo drill and throwing that thumb out of the ball because no matter how tight I make that thumb hole, if I've got my hand behind the ball and I do a yo-yo motion, it's flying off my hand and I don't have to worry about gripping anything. Like with any drill, it takes a lot of reps. With me, I found that if I have a pair of lanes and I have three bowling balls that I can pretty much just do one after the other. For me, I do about 150 to 200 drill reps per day when I practice, just because I'm working on it right now. When I get this down, uh, I'll probably do anywhere from 25 to 50 reps just to open the practice session up with. So that's foul line drill number one. And I would like to point out that I did not invent these drills. I am not trying to take credit for the drills. I posted some videos on Facebook last week after bowling the Players' Championship. For a few years, and particularly during that event, um, I've been having a very hard time clearing the ball. Uh, my hands have been getting stuck and coming away around the side like this with my thumb still in the ball. I just get in jail. And then the, when I get stuck out here like this, I, I pull up, I hit up on it. So not only is my hand way on the side in the wrong position, but then I hit up on it also. So it just creates a lot of over under down lane when you do that. So the purpose of these drills is to clean up the release, speed up the hand, and get, and get your hit direction going down lane instead of up in the air. I know my father who coaches Davenport uses them quite a bit. And I've also seen Rick Benoit use them, and there's probably countless other of you out there that use them as well. Another variation to the drill that I do, this one's kind of tough. 
but you basically get down on one knee, you have the ball back here, and again, it's, it's this, hit, this motion forward, and the goal is to keep the ball from, from bouncing on the lane. So you want it to stay on the lane surface. You just follow through straight out. Don't, don't do that. Because if, if, if you happen to clear the thumb a little bit late and you come up this way, you're just going to hit up on the ball and it's going to create some skid flip reactions down lane. All right, this one here, if you would have heard, if you'd listen, if you could hear it, you heard that ball bounce off his hand. This drill here is to make sure that you're getting your thumb out of the ball and pushing the ball down the lane. If you hear a bounce, you've actually grabbed the ball a little bit to try to put something on it with your fingers. We're just trying to roll the ball here and learn how to do that on the lane. Again, we want to start back here, uncoil, yo-yo the hand forward, but do it in a way that when your hand clears, the ball doesn't jump up out on the lane. So you don't want to do that. That's bad, that's what we don't want to do. What we do want to do, however, is keep the ball on the, on the lane, on the approach and on the lane as we push it forward. It speeds up the hand and gets your hit going direction going that way. So it trains you to keep your hand behind the ball and to keep your hit direction going out on the lane instead of coming around the side of it and hitting up on it. The goal of these drills, you know, there's this thing called deep practice. Uh, some of you might have read about it in some sports psychology books, but the best way to get into deep practice is you have to isolate the components of your game that you're trying to work on. In my case, I'm trying to work on my release, so I'm trying to isolate the release from my footwork and from my swing, hence the foul line drills. The third component of this drill that I do is I incorporate my legs and the release, but not my swing. <laughs> that one, we, we change this drill all the time depending on the player. But the idea behind this drill is strictly to increase rev rate, to get the right mechanics to create rev rate with the least amount of effort. So we bend the elbow a little bit to try to mimic a relaxed elbow at the bottom and get the hand in the proper position to maximize the yo-yo effect when we get to the foul line when the hand comes off and, we, and that rev rate gets to the best we can or the highest we can with the least amount of work. And over the course of time, we'll change that with players because everybody's a little different, their body style's different, so we will change that drill up just a little bit depending on the player. So you just start here. Same principle, you want your hit direction going that way, up the back, yo-yo up the back of the ball, out on the, out straight that way you want your you want the energy of your momentum and your hand motion to be parallel with the lane surface to avoid the ball going like this out of your hand hitting up on it and creating some over under down lane reaction if you guys have ever th th threw a frisbee played with a yo-yo it's the same principle, Just this way, bam. When I was younger, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't own a bowling center. I didn't have the money to go spend practicing and everything, so I couldn't do that. I couldn't learn those. I couldn't do these drills on an approach or anything like that. So I had to come up with methods to teach myself how to bowl. With that, I couldn't throw a bowling ball in the basement, so 
I grabbed the next thing that I could think of out of my mom's cupboard, and that was a can of V8 juice. I think at the time it was actually Campbell's tomato juice. And I'd take this, I'd walk my regular approach, teach myself how to walk straight, keep my hip out of the way, and slide and roll this into a pillow against the wall in the basement. And we get that nice roll, and over and roll like that by just rolling a ball off our hand. That same drill we're doing with that bowling ball, that yo-yo drill at the foul line. It's that same one. That's all it is. We're just taking that ball and rolling it. And this is a good way because we have, if we tip it, we grab it, it's not going to roll. Gonna tell yeah. it off and after you do that a few times, you do this at home, everybody, the can will get leaks. Yeah. <laughs> so what he's trying to say is you don't want, you don't want the can hitting the, the, the floor like on its edge like this or like this. You just want it flat. I want to say with these drills, these are drills I developed for my game and the way I am, and they seem to work very much. I have to adjust them for some people. But they give you a general idea of trying to roll the ball as opposed to throwing it. But here's a good one with a bowling pin. I used to do this when I used to work late nights when I managed a bowling center years ago. Just take an old pin, and your hand's the same way as it is on that tomato can, and your axis is here. And then you can increase that rotation by how quick you do that, how quick you turn, twist that hand will cause that axis to rotate a little harder or a little faster for you. And if you don't want to break, uh, break dishes at home, you can get like a Nerf football or something and do it with that yeah. too. Well, you want to do the drills correctly because with anything, you don't want to reinforce poor habits. So if you're going to take the time to do the drill and do all the reps and the hundreds and thousands of reps it takes to ingrain it into your neural pathways and your motor skills, uh, you want to do it correctly. I think there's a quote that it doesn't matter how nice you paint the wall if you paint the wrong wall. So you want to do the drills correctly to reinforce the proper motor skills associated with that drill and that biomechanical motion. Other reasons for getting that ball softly off your hand is that we let the lane do what it's going to do. The friction on the lane hooks the ball. The, the help potential is your axis rotation. We just want to set it down softly on the lane and then we can do it consistently all the time. We're going to see a nice consistent reaction over a lot of different patterns. As opposed like when he said earlier when he had the meat hook and he's rolling the elbow on and things like that, he's getting, everything seems over under. The ball's doing like this. We miss a little right, back hurts, way gone, we miss hurts. a little left, and then three games of bowling, your legs sore, your back sore, your, your thumbs bleeding, and we just, it, the game shouldn't be that hard. And these, these drills, doing this drill correctly and learning it at the end and that you can do it, it's going to make the game a lot more fun, let you bowl a lot more consistent on a lot of different patterns, and just enjoying every facet of the game a lot more. So I've been bowling, uh, I've been, I started a, it's called the Monday Mastery Skills Challenge. We bowl in a skills bowling environment with no flare bowling balls and super light volumes. I've been bowling pretty well with the meat hook uh, because those patterns are such light volume and they're buffed so long that my ball slows down on its own in the pattern. So what we're gonna do is we'll throw some of my meat hook, sh meat hook shots from the Monday night shows into this video along with some of the recorded shots uh, that I've done this past week uh, that are on Facebook and some shots that Parker took of me today. And you can compare and you can see firsthand the difference that these drills have made in such a short amount of time. So in today's video we talked about three different drills, online drills you can do to uh, help clean up your release and speed up your hand and, and get yourself in the proper position at the point of release. We did the yo-yo drill, we did the foul line drill, and then we did the, the uh, approach version of the yo-yo drill. Uh, that was followed by a couple of at-home versions that you can try uh, if you don't have access to uh, a bowling center at that particular moment in time. 
I want to say a special thanks to Parker to Cover. Uh, he does a fantastic job. He does our Monday Night Skills Challenge uh, video shoots. Uh, he's doing the shoot for us today. So uh, look him up, Parker to Cover on Facebook, if you uh, are interested in doing any video shoots. I'd also like to thank Spectrum Entertainment Complex, my father, uh, Brands of Brunswick Bowling, and High Five Gear. They make great shirts, so check them out. I hope everyone enjoyed the video today and I wish you the best of luck, good luck, and high scores everyone.